Hi Mamas, it's Diane here with part two of our video interview with maternity nurse Jody Waugh. Now we talked about breastfeeding last time, how to learn to properly feed your baby, how to help it to latch on. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about that and she starts off by telling us about mastitis. Have a listen. Mastitis is a blocked milk duct. You can get it a few different reasons. Sometimes it just happens, but the most common reason why it happens is that we teach mums, you want to up close and personal, hi everybody, <laughs> um, that when a mom, so I'm just going to show you on myself, so you take your thumb and you take your breast and you're going to put your hand, yep. you like my shirt, yep. I'm a mom and a nurse, nothing scares me, <laughs> <I love> <laughs> but you're going to take your hand underneath your breast. And here's my baby. <laughs> We're going to support the baby on the back of the head. What you're going to do is you're going to grasp between the thumb and your middle finger, and then you're going to just support the baby's finger here. So the palm of your hand is actually bottom of the, of the shoulder blades. You don't want to hold the baby's head like this because you're shoving them on. And what happens is you push their chin into their chest. So you actually want to make sure you hold at the shoulder blades so that the head can naturally come back and it's opened a little bit, okay? You're then gonna hold your hand underneath your breast and you're actually gonna point your nipple to the baby's nose. So what happens is you're holding the baby, you're gonna take your nipple and you're gonna tease their nose and tease the upper lip. When the baby starts to open up and you get that nice big open mouth, you're going to bring the baby from the chin over top of the breast onto the, onto the breast and the back of the areola so that they feed. Now, it's going to be uncomfortable for the first couple of, of sucks, but it shouldn't be painful. If it's agonizingly painful, it's making your toes curl, you stop the, this feed. What you're going to do is you're going to stick your finger in the baby's mouth. You're going to break the seal. You're going to take the baby off, and then you're going to get yourself comfortable. It's really important, and you can really good thing for your partner to help you is lots of pillows and lots of blankets because you want the baby up at the height of the breast. You don't want the baby down here and you're trying to chase the baby around with your breast. That's not the way to do it. Bring lots of pillows and lots of blankets. So baby's right up level with your breast. You can tuck this hand underneath. This hand sometimes starts to get everywhere. You can use a little blanket to tuck it out of the way and then support that breast. Tease that upper lip with the nipple, that big bird mouth, bring the baby onto you. So you got that nice big breast or big mouth over top of that areola of the breast. This is it helps prevent, um, it prevents the nipple breakdown. And then, sorry, kind of got off on a tangent, mastitis. So once the baby starts feeding, you're going to make sure you take this thumb and this finger, and you're going to remove this hand. Because what happens is people tend to hold and they put pressure for the whole entire feed. And what happens is this stops the milk flow either underneath or up top. So once that baby's well established, again, you have lots of blankets and pillows. That baby should be just resting comfortably there. You shouldn't have to hold the baby. You need to relax your shoulders, relax your body. And all of that relaxation allows the milk to flow and do what we call let down. You'll feel it. Sometimes I used to feel like almost like a little burning sensation. Like you just feel that milk start to flow. Okay. So you want to remove that hand. If you do notice a red mark or a little lump, just when the baby's feeding is just help massage towards the breast, towards that nipple itself. And that helps to open up the milk ducts. Also, if you notice a red spot, you wanna make sure that you can reposition the baby and maybe just hold in a different position. So do a cross cradle. So you're now gonna hold so that your thumb's not in the same spot. You're gonna hold and do a cross cradle on a different spot. So the baby doesn't, you're not holding in that same spot to, to cause mastitis. And if you do notice it's really red and streaks and you get fever and feel fluish, you very well might have mastitis and you may possibly need to go on antibiotics. Now that doesn't mean you need to stop breastfeeding. You still need to feed and you need to feed even more frequently, but just making sure that you're massaging it, some Tylenol for the pain and discomfort and some sometimes antibiotics. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, you explained that so well. It just brought back all these memories, <laughs> right? Remember that. And it's so sweet because they are, they're opening their mouths, right? And they're just getting ready, they know. So we are not squashing them. We're not stopping their breathing by putting them so tight. Okay. Yeah. So one of the big things you want to make sure 
is you start looking for cues. So babies will give you cues. Sometimes people wait until the baby is like screaming, crying to get fed. As soon as you start to see a baby starts to stir, they actually start to lick their lips and smack their lips and stick out their tongue a little bit. And you'll start to see them kind of on their side of their hands and start to, it's called rooting. They're actually starting to, those are the signs that say, hey, I'm, I'm starting to think about being hungry here. This is the time that you need to kind of start acting. So this is, again, a job that you can include your partner because I do find that partners feel um, left out of the breastfeeding part because they're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, what you can do is the partner can take the baby, go and get the baby changed. Some babies are very sleepy, especially in the first week or two, sometimes stripping the baby just down to diaper because if they tend to fall asleep at the breast, you need to strip them down to wake them up a little bit. You don't want, you want them to cool down a bit and then have the partner get them ready while the mom goes and gets ready. And when I mean get ready, she needs to do a few things, especially in that first few days after birth, because what happens, and this is one another reason why we want the baby to feed immediately after birth, is there's hormones that get released when you breastfeed, and it causes called oxytocin. And what it does is it causes uterine cramping. So it's normal to have a little bit of cramps. And with that cramps, it's normal to have a gush of blood. So before you start breastfeeding, make sure you go to the bathroom. So you have an empty bladder. You want to make sure that you have a fresh pad on so you don't feel that gush and be worried about leaking out. You want to make sure that um, maybe have some Tylenol Advil on board if you have um, pretty significant cramps, because a lot of women do for that first week or two after birth. And then have your glass of water. Because as you're feeding, you got to remember, you're providing fluids to another human being. You need to drink lots of fluids to help keep your milk flow going. Great. That's awesome. One thing I wanted to share, and there are never any silly questions. Nope. And when you were mentioned about the areola, there's not just one. And I remember I shared this with you. I always thought there was just like one, you know, jet going out with milk. But I was sharing yeah, to Jody that. When I was nursing my son Landon, I remember I was very tired. And, I, and then I looked down and the poor guy had like yeah, five things all over his face, right? <laughs> and I was surprised. So, you know, these are things we don't know. Yep. So, Or yep. the other well, side starts spraying. If you're shirtless, the other side's just spraying. It's like, <laughs> have a blanket or have a, a, a nursing pad close by. <laughs> Yeah, it's an ordeal. It's really, you know, there's a lot going on there for sure. And then the other thing that um, on my program, I'm helping moms with um, these must-have products too that they can go and get through Amazon, but those nursing pillows, because you said the baby should be up high, right? Right. Really helpful just to lift them, right? Everybody's different what they like. My kids are too old to uh, have the nursing pillows, but they are handy as long as they fit around you nicely. You can get twin pillows if you've got multiples. Um, you can get single ones that slide to the side. And, right. and again, if you're on a budget, you don't have to go crazy about those. A simple, nice couch with a nice big arm or a big lazy boy chair with a nice big arm and pillows and blankets work perfect. But if you have access to or you want a baby shower gift, that's a great thing to have as a, as a, as a feeding pillow. But um, good old fashioned blankets and pillows are fine as well. But that is it's so, so important that the baby's height is up high and level with your breasts and the baby's tummy is to the mummy, right? Because we don't want the baby like this. And then they're having to turn their head to try to feed. We want to make sure their body is facing the mom so that when they get latched on, they're nice and straight. And this way they're not pulling and pulling at the tissue of the nipple and breaking down the nipple. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. I love the way you explained it all because it's so easy to understand. Thank you. So if there's a concern like a blocked milk duct, is there anything else that moms might notice that they would be concerned about? Is that pretty much it having a blocked duct? Um, milk flow is the other big thing. Again, we talked a little bit about volume. So Again, you can't see the going in, but you definitely see the going out. So if you're noticing the baby's only putting one or two diapers um, out in a day after day four or five, that starts to get a bit concerning. You might also see it's called, um, it's like brick dust. It's like an orangey type color. And what that in the diaper where the pee is supposed to be and what that's telling you is the baby's too dry. 
So you need to make sure that you're drinking lots, you're getting lots of rest and you're hydrating yourself because you need to hydrate the baby more. So you need to increase your feedings more frequently. Babies, again, sleeping past three hours is as a newborn is not normal. We need to wake them up and we need to get them to feed and feed well. So people always say, how long do we feed a baby for? Is it two minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? We don't really know. Um, the thing is, is that babies, again, will show you cues when they're hungry. And then they'll show you cues when they're kind of full. And every woman is a bit different. Some women need a baby to suckle for four or five minutes before they let down, before the milk actually starts to flow. Again, positioning, pain control, fluid, yourself relax. I always say to women, they complain. They often complain about their shoulders being sore. It's because they're so stressed out. They're like this holding the baby. I'm like, okay, relax, big breath. Because the more that you settle and the more that you think that this is a natural thing, the better the milk's going to flow, the better letdown's going to happen. And everything is natural. This is how we've been fed for years and years and years. So just let it naturally happen. And the majority of the time it's going to. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because that is the whole premise of, of what I do, but just, you know, natural, you know, and just know, and even like, tell yourself, this is wonderful. This is the baby is, you know, getting the milk it needs just all these reaffirming thoughts. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, thank you. One question came to mind about too much milk and burping and spinning up. That's pretty common though, because like their, their tummies are so tiny. Is that why? Yeah, it, ca it can be. Again, the difference between breast and bottle is bottles are a lot harder nipple. So they tend to suck more air in around the corners of their mouth. So they tend to, and if the bottle is not held up when you bottle feed, you need to make sure that you're holding the baby in an upright position. So you need to make sure you're holding the bottle up if you hold the bottle down, they can suck more air and can get a lot um, gassier. A lot of times with breastfed babies, just because the breast is more pliable, they get a better seal and they don't suck as much air. So most times we find that breastfed babies are not quite as gassy. Um, so we tend to have, and again, a lot less constipation because it has natural laxatives in it. It just digests a lot more. Now, People sometimes get that you have to breastfeed. There's no ands, ifs, or buts. If there's a reason why a mom needs to bottle feed, there are reasons. So don't think that you've done anything wrong. Don't think that there's anything um, that detrimental to the baby. Formulas are made so amazing nowadays. If there's a, a mental health issue with breastfeeding, if it's a physiological, some women have had reductions. So often when you have a breast reduction, the doc should talk to you before surgery. Like if you're in your 20s, they should say like, are you planning on having children? Because this is a surgery you will not be able to um, feed after. There's different types. So if they've done a type where they say you should be able to breastfeed, then again, it's just something that you're gonna have to monitor closely. If there's some reason where the baby's extremely premature, you can pump and we will actually, in the nursery, we'll feed that pumped milk to the baby. But there's lots of reasons why a mom sometimes needs to go to formula and you never should punish yourself or feel bad about that. It's what is going to make a great experience and a great bonding time with you and your baby. Wonderful. Oh, that's an excellent way to end this conversation. Thank you, Jody. That was so great. So I'm going to get you back for another one. We were talking about um, mental health too. So we're going to do that too. Uh, and just for the mamas to know um, if you have questions on what Jody and I discussed today, you can put them in the Facebook group and we'll get them answered for you. Uh, I'll provide the link to the PDF as well. Um, the, the baby pillows or just like she said, just get yourself some pillows and get ready for feeding your baby breast or bottle. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. Thanks for dropping by and watching the show with me today. I hope you really got something out of it. Hey, listen, I just want to remind you that if you are carrying a baby, you also need to be carrying a subscription to our YouTube channel because we're going to give you all the information that you really need to make the most out of your pregnancy and have the most enjoyable journey. And I have a very special offer I want to tell you about. I've been helping moms enjoy their pregnancy, reduce pain, and get the most out of their pregnancy for over 20 years. 
and I've built an online workshop that I'm doing right now to help new mums really understand the three fundamental secrets that you need to know so that you can go through your entire pregnancy and labor with as little pain as possible. So if you want to watch the workshops and join me, go to havingababy.io. We'll see you on the next show.